Hi everyone. So this time we'll be using StatCrunch to do uh, paired samples or dependent samples. Okay, so one way you can tell if this is a paired sample is if you have uh, a sample of, of people, in this case it's students, that took something um, twice or they got tested uh, it was the same group that was tested for two different things. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll move my um, I'll copy over my data to StatCrunch here. So it just has a quick re um, review. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and copy it to clipboard. Okay, and then since we have titles, we want to make sure we click up here before we paste it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now. If you ever forget where um, you would go, all you have to do is check under Z stats and T stats. So what we want to do is uh, we want to do a paired test. So as you can see, there's no pair here in the Z stats. Okay? That's how you know it wouldn't be a Z. It's actually under the T right here with uh, where it says paired. So make sure you select that. So again, stat, T stats, paired. Okay, so now we got to put in our data. So the first one you would want to pick is actually what's in the second column. The one that the stuff that's in the first column is just a marker for, in this case, our test subjects. Okay, so make sure you pick what's in the second column for your first sample and what's in the third column for your second sample. Okay, <clears throat> now you want to go ahead and make sure that you match your hypothesis. So let me just double check mine real quick. Make sure you match the alternative hypothesis. Okay. And then there's this box here that um, says differences. So you want to go ahead and make sure you check that. Okay. Then go ahead and click on compute. Now let me move this box down so you can see it. What happened was with that box that we checked for the differences is it did the differences for us, so you don't have to do it yourself. Okay, if you ever forgot to do it, you would have to go back and make sure you check that box. Okay? Okay, now, the other thing we need to do is we need to do our summary stats. So as a quick reminder, that would be under stats, summary stats, and columns. Okay, so for this particular problem, what we want to do is we want to select the um, column titled differences. Okay, so everything's already pre-selected for you here. So go ahead and click on Compute. And what we actually need from here is um, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so if you remember from chapters one and two and actually a bunch of the other chapters, um, if you're using the Pearson textbook, X bar was our mean. So here we have the notation D bar. Okay, so this is actually the mean of our differences. Right there. Okay, so that's it right there. And also in the paired test, it, all, it appears also. The thing that doesn't appear on, on the, the results for this is the standard deviation, which is why we had to do the summary stats as well, because that'll this particular question also asked for the uh, standard deviation of the differences. Okay, and the reason why we did the, uh, the paired test was for the standardized test statistic, which is down here. All right, so as a quick reminder, a little quick review, we went under stat, T stats paired. Okay, disregard that first column. The second column is actually our first set of data. The third column is our second set of data. Make sure you check this box here um, for the differences. That'll put all, that'll um, have the program do all the differences between the two samples and put them in the column for you, so you don't have to do it manually. And go ahead and make sure you match this up to whatever your alternative hypothesis was. And just like with the two samples, we'll leave that at zero. <clears throat> All right, so that's it for paired samples.
Um, there's really not much to it. You don't have to worry about pooling variances for this one. Um, yeah, well, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned for my next video.